Cross-validation, sometimes called rotation estimation, or out-of-sample testing is any of various similar model validation techniques for assessing how the results of a statistical analysis will generalize to an independent data set. It is mainly used in settings where the goal is prediction, and one wants to estimate how accurately a predictive model will perform in practice. In a prediction problem, a model is usually given a dataset of known data on which training is run, training dataset, and a dataset of unknown data or first seen data against which the model is tested, called the validation dataset or testing set. The goal of cross-validation is to test the model's ability to predict new data that was not used in estimating it, in order to flag problems like overfitting or selection bias and to give an insight on how the model will generalize to an independent dataset i.e., an unknown dataset, for instance from a real problem. One round of cross-validation involves partitioning a sample of data into complementary subsets, performing the analysis on one subset called the training set, and validating the analysis on the other subset called the validation set or testing set. To reduce variability, in most methods multiple rounds of cross-validation are performed using different partitions, and the validation results are combined e averaged over the rounds to give an estimate of the model's predictive performance. In summary, cross-validation combines averages measures of fitness in prediction to derive a more accurate estimate of model prediction performance. Purpose of cross-validation Suppose we have a model with one or more unknown parameters, and a data set to which the model can be fit the training data set. The fitting process optimizes the model parameters to make the model fit the training data as well as possible. If we then take an independent sample of validation data from the same population as the training data, it will generally turn out that the model does not fit the validation data as well as it fits the training data. The size of this difference is likely to be large especially when the size of the training data set is small, or when the number of parameters in the model is large. Cross-validation is a way to estimate the size of this effect. In linear regression we have real response values y1 yn, and np-dimensional vector covariates x1 xn. The components of the vector xi are denoted xi1 xip. If we use least squares to fit a function in the form of a hyperplane y equals a plus beta tx to the data xi, yi, 1 i n, we could then assess the fit using the mean squared error MSE. The MSE for given estimated parameter values a and beta on the training set xi, yi, 1 i n is 1 n i equals 1 n y i minus a minus beta t x i 2 equals 1 n i equals 1 n y i minus a minus beta 1 x i 1 minus minus beta p x i p 2 display style frac 1 n sum underscore i equals 1 carrot n y underscore i a bold symbol beta carrot t math b f x under Underscore I carrot two equals frac one N sum underscore I equals one carrot N Y underscore I a beta underscore one X underscore I one dots beta underscore P X underscore I P carrot two If the model is correctly specified, it can be shown under mild assumptions that the expected value of the MSE for the training set is N minus P minus one N plus P plus one. This biased estimate is called the in-sample estimate of the fit, whereas the cross-validation estimate is an out-of-sample estimate. Since in linear regression it is possible to directly compute the factor n minus p minus one n plus p plus one by which the training MSE underestimates the validation MSE under the assumption that the model specification is valid, cross-validation can be used for checking whether the model has been overfitted, in which case the MSE in the validation set will substantially exceed its anticipated value. Cross-validation in the context of linear regression is also useful in that it can be used to select an optimally regularized cost function. 
In most other regression procedures e.g. logistic regression, there is no simple formula to compute the expected out-of-sample fit. Cross-validation is, thus, a generally applicable way to predict the performance of a model on unavailable data using numerical computation in place of theoretical analysis. Common types of cross-validation Two types of cross-validation can be distinguished, exhaustive and non-exhaustive cross-validation. Exhaustive cross-validation Exhaustive cross-validation methods are cross-validation methods which learn and test on all possible ways to divide the original sample into a training and a validation set. <laughs> Leave P-out cross-validation Leave P out cross validation involves using P observations as the validation set and the remaining observations as the training set. This is repeated on all ways to cut the original sample on a validation set of P observations and a training set. LPO cross validation requires training and validating the model C P N Display style c underscore p caret n times where n is the number of observations in the original sample and where c p n display style c underscore p caret n is the binomial coefficient. For p greater than one and for even moderately large n, LPOCV can become computationally infeasible. For example, with n topic 100 and p 30 equals 30% 30 of 100 c 30 100 approximately equals 3 times 10 25 Display style c underscore thirty carrot one hundred approx three times ten carrot twenty five. Topic: Leave one out cross validation. Leave one out cross validation is a particular case of leave p out cross validation with p equals one. The process looks similar to jackknife, however, with cross-validation one computes a statistic on the left-out samples, while with jackknifing one computes a statistic from the kept samples only. LU cross-validation requires less computation time than LPO cross-validation because there are only c 1 n equals n Display style c underscore one carrot n equals n passes rather than c k n display style c underscore k carrot n. However, n display style n passes may still require quite a large computation time, in which case other approaches such as k-fold cross-validation may be more appropriate. Pseudo-code algorithm Input x – vector of length n with x values of data points y – vector of length n with y values of data points output er – estimate for the prediction error steps er 0 for i1 n do define the cross validation subsets x underscore in x 1 x i minus 1 x i plus 1 x n y underscore in y 1 y i minus 1 y i plus 1 y n x underscore out x i Y underscore out interpolate x underscore in, y underscore in, x underscore out, y underscore out. 
er er plus y i minus y underscore out squared end for er er n topic non-exhaustive cross validation Non-exhaustive cross-validation methods do not compute all ways of splitting the original sample. Those methods are approximations of leave p-out cross-validation. <laughs> K-fold cross-validation in k-fold cross-validation, the original sample is randomly partitioned into k-equal-sized subsamples. Of the k subsamples, a single subsample is retained as the validation data for testing the model, and the remaining k-1 subsamples are used as training data. The cross-validation process is then repeated k times, with each of the k subsamples used exactly once as the validation data. The K results can then be averaged to produce a single estimation. The advantage of this method over repeated random sub-sampling is that all observations are used for both training and validation, and each observation is used for validation exactly once. Ten-fold cross-validation is commonly used, but in general K remains an unfixed parameter. For example, setting k equals 2 results in two-fold cross-validation. In two-fold cross-validation, we randomly shuffle the data set into two sets D0 and D1, so that both sets are equal size this is usually implemented by shuffling the data array and then splitting it in two. We then train on D0 and validate on D1, followed by training on D1 and validating on D0. When k equals n the number of observations, the k-fold cross-validation is exactly the leave one out cross-validation. In stratified k-fold cross-validation, the folds are selected so that the mean response value is approximately equal in all the folds. In the case of binary classification, this means that each fold contains roughly the same proportions of the two types of class labels. Equals Topic: Holdout method. Equals. In the holdout method, we randomly assign data points to two sets D0 and D1, usually called the training set and the test set, respectively. The size of each of the sets is arbitrary, although typically the test set is smaller than the training set. We then train, build a model on D0 and test, evaluate its performance on D1. In typical cross-validation, results of multiple runs of model testing are averaged together. In contrast, the holdout method, in isolation, involves a single run. It should be used with caution because without such averaging of multiple runs, one may achieve highly misleading results. One's indicator of predictive accuracy F asterisk, as noted below, will tend to be unstable since it will not be smoothed out by multiple iterations. Similarly, indicators of the specific role played by various predictor variables e.g., values of regression coefficients will tend to be unstable. While the holdout method can be framed as the simplest kind of cross-validation, Many sources instead classify holdout as a type of simple validation, rather than a simple or degenerate form of cross-validation. <laughs> Repeated random sub-sampling validation This method, also known as Monte Carlo cross-validation, creates multiple random splits of the dataset into training and validation data. For each such split, the model is fit to the training data, and predictive accuracy is assessed using the validation data. The results are then averaged over the splits. The advantage of this method over k-fold cross-validation is that the proportion of the training-validation split is not dependent on the number of iterations folds. The disadvantage of this method is that some observations may never be selected in the validation subsample, whereas others may be selected more than once. 
In other words, validation subsets may overlap. This method also exhibits Monte Carlo variation, meaning that the results will vary if the analysis is repeated with different random splits. As the number of random splits approaches infinity, the result of repeated random sub-sampling validation tends towards that of leave p out cross-validation. In a stratified variant of this approach, the random samples are generated in such a way that the mean response value i.e. the dependent variable in the regression is equal in the training and testing sets. This is particularly useful if the responses are dichotomous with an unbalanced representation of the two response values in the data. Topic: <laughs> Nested cross-validation. When cross-validation is used simultaneously for selection of the best set of hyperparameters and for error estimation and assessment of generalization capacity, a nested cross-validation is required. Many variants exist. At least two variants can be distinguished. Topic: <laughs> K*L-fold cross-validation. This is a truly nested variant for instance used by, which contains an outer loop of k-folds and an inner loop of l-folds. The total data set is split in k-sets. One by one, a set is selected as outer test set and the k-1 other sets are combined into the corresponding outer training set. This is repeated for each of the k-sets. Each outer training set is further sub-divided into l-sets. One by one, a set is selected as inner test validation set and the L1 other sets are combined into the corresponding inner training set. This is repeated for each of the L sets. The inner training sets are used to fit model parameters, while the outer test set is used as a validation set to provides an unbiased evaluation of the model fit. Typically, this is repeated for many different hyperparameters or even different model types and the validation set is used to determine the best hyperparameter set and model type for this inner training set. After this, a new model is fit on the entire outer training set, using the best set of hyperparameters from the inner cross-validation. The performance of this model is then evaluated using the outer test set. topic k fold cross validation with validation and test set a slightly less granular approach is to use a single k fold cross validation with both a validation and test set the total data set is split in k sets one by one a set is selected as test set then, one by one, one of the remaining sets is used as a validation sets and the other K2 sets are used as training sets until all possible combinations have been evaluated. Similar to the K**L-fold cross-validation, the training set is used for model fitting and the validation set is used for model evaluation for each of the hyperparameter sets. Finally, for the selected parameter set, the test set is used to evaluate the model with the best parameter set. Here, two variants are possible, either evaluating the model that was trained on the training set or evaluating a new model that was fit on the combination of the train and the validation set. <laughs> <laughs> Measures of fit The goal of cross-validation is to estimate the expected level of fit of a model to a data set that is independent of the data that were used to train the model. It can be used to estimate any quantitative measure of fit that is appropriate for the data and model. For example, for binary classification problems, each case in the validation set is either predicted correctly or incorrectly. In this situation the misclassification error rate can be used to summarize the fit, although other measures like positive predictive value could also be used. When the value being predicted is continuously distributed, the mean squared error, root mean squared error or median absolute deviation could be used to summarize the errors.
Topic: Including prior information in cross-validation. When users apply cross-validation to select a good configuration, lambda display style lambda then they might want to balance the cross-validated choice with their own estimate of the configuration. In this way, they can attempt to counter the validity of cross-validation when the sample size is small and include relevant information from previous research. In a forecasting combination exercise, for instance, cross-validation can be applied to estimate the weights that are assigned to each forecast. Since a simple equal weighted forecast is difficult to beat, a penalty can be added for deviating from equal weights. Or, if cross-validation is applied to assign individual weights to observations, then one can penalize deviations from equal weights to avoid wasting potentially relevant information. Horn Wegg shows how a tuning parameter gamma can be defined so that a user can intuitively balance between the accuracy of cross-validation and the simplicity of sticking to a reference parameter lambda r display style lambda underscore r that is defined by the user if lambda i display style lambda underscore i denotes the i T H display style i caret T H candidate configuration that might be selected, then the loss function that is to be minimized can be defined as L lambda i equals one minus gamma relative accuracy i plus gamma relative simplicity i display style l underscore lambda underscore i equals 1 gamma m box relative accuracy underscore i plus gamma m box relative simplicity underscore i relative accuracy can be quantified as mse lambda i mse lambda R display style m box mse lambda underscore i m box mse lambda underscore r so that the mean squared error of a candidate lambda i display style lambda underscore i is made relative to that of a user specified lambda r display style lambda underscore r the relative simplicity term measures the amount that lambda i display style lambda underscore i deviates from lambda r display style lambda underscore r relative to the maximum amount of deviation from lambda r display style lambda underscore r Accordingly, relative simplicity can be specified as lambda i minus lambda r two lambda max minus lambda r two Display style frac lambda underscore i lambda underscore r carrot two lambda underscore max lambda underscore r carrot two where lambda max display style lambda underscore max corresponds to the lambda display style lambda value with the highest permissible deviation from lambda R display style lambda underscore R with gamma element of zero one display style gamma in zero one the user determines how high the influence of the reference parameter is relative to cross validation. 
One can add relative simplicity terms for multiple configurations. C equals one two C display style C equals one two C by specifying the loss function as L lambda I equals relative accuracy I plus C equals one C gamma C one minus gamma C relative simplicity I C Display style L underscore Lambda underscore I equals M box relative accuracy underscore I plus sum underscore C equals one carrot C frac gamma underscore C one gamma underscore C M box relative simplicity underscore I C Hornweg twenty eighteen shows that a loss function with such an accuracy simplicity trade-off can also be used to intuitively define shrinkage estimators like the adaptive lasso and Bayesian ridge regression. Click on the lasso for an example. Topic: Statistical properties. Suppose we choose a measure of fit f, and use cross-validation to produce an estimate f** of the expected fit f of a model to an independent data set drawn from the same population as the training data. If we imagine sampling multiple independent training sets following the same distribution, the resulting values for f** will vary. The statistical properties of f** result from this variation. The cross-validation estimator f** is very nearly unbiased for f. The reason that it is slightly biased is that the training set in cross-validation is slightly smaller than the actual data set e.g. for LOOCV the training set size is n-1 when there are n observed cases. In nearly all situations, the effect of this bias will be conservative in that the estimated fit will be slightly biased in the direction suggesting a poorer fit. In practice, this bias is rarely a concern. The variance of f** can be large. For this reason, if two statistical procedures are compared based on the results of cross-validation, it is important to note that the procedure with the better estimated performance may not actually be the better of the two procedures i.e. it may not have the better value of f. Some progress has been made on constructing confidence intervals around cross-validation estimates, but this is considered a difficult problem. Computational issues Most forms of cross-validation are straightforward to implement as long as an implementation of the prediction method being studied is available. In particular, the prediction method can be a «black box». There is no need to have access to the internals of its implementation. If the prediction method is expensive to train, cross-validation can be very slow since the training must be carried out repeatedly. In some cases such as least squares and kernel regression, cross-validation can be sped up significantly by pre-computing certain values that are needed repeatedly in the training, or by using fast, updating rules, such as the Sherman-Morrison formula. However one must be careful to preserve the total blinding of the validation set from the training procedure, otherwise bias may result. An extreme example of accelerating cross-validation occurs in linear regression, where the results of cross-validation have a closed-form expression known as the prediction residual error sum of squares press. <laughs> Limitations and misuse Cross-validation only yields meaningful results if the validation set and training set are drawn from the same population and only if human biases are controlled. 
In many applications of predictive modeling, the structure of the system being studied evolves over time i.e. it is «non-stationary». Both of these can introduce systematic differences between the training and validation sets. For example, if a model for predicting stock values is trained on data for a certain five-year period, it is unrealistic to treat the subsequent five-year period as a draw from the same population. As another example, suppose a model is developed to predict an individual's risk for being diagnosed with a particular disease within the next year. If the model is trained using data from a study involving only a specific population group e.g. young people or males, but is then applied to the general population, the cross-validation results from the training set could differ greatly from the actual predictive performance. In many applications, models also may be incorrectly specified and vary as a function of modeler biases and or arbitrary choices. When this occurs, there may be an illusion that the system changes in external samples, whereas the reason is that the model has missed a critical predictor and or included a confounded predictor. New evidence is that cross-validation by itself is not very predictive of external validity, whereas a form of experimental validation known as swap sampling that does control for human bias can be much more predictive of external validity. As defined by this large MAQC2 study across 30,000 models, swap sampling incorporates cross-validation in the sense that predictions are tested across independent training and validation samples. Yet, models are also developed across these independent samples and by modelers who are blinded to one another. When there is a mismatch in these models developed across these swapped training and validation samples as happens quite frequently, MAQC2 shows that this will be much more predictive of poor external predictive validity than traditional cross-validation. The reason for the success of the swapped sampling is a built-in control for human biases in model building. In addition to placing too much faith in predictions that may vary across modelers and lead to poor external validity due to these confounding modeler effects, these are some other ways that cross-validation can be misused. By performing an initial analysis to identify the most informative features using the entire data set, if feature selection or model tuning is required by the modeling procedure, this must be repeated on every training set. Otherwise, predictions will certainly be upwardly biased. If cross-validation is used to decide which features to use, an inner cross-validation to carry out the feature selection on every training set must be performed. By allowing some of the training data to also be included in the test set, this can happen due to twinning in the data set, whereby some exactly identical or nearly identical samples are present in the data set. Note that to some extent twinning always takes place even in perfectly independent training and validation samples. This is because some of the training sample observations will have nearly identical values of predictors as validation sample observations. And some of these will correlate with a target at better than chance levels in the same direction in both training and validation when they are actually driven by confounded predictors with poor external validity. If such a cross-validated model is selected from a k-fold set, human confirmation bias will be at work and determine that such a model has been validated. This is why traditional cross-validation needs to be supplemented with controls for human bias and confounded model specification like swap sampling and prospective studies. Cross-validation for time series models Since the order of the data is important, cross-validation might be problematic for time series models. A more appropriate approach might be to use forward chaining. However, if performance is described by a single summary statistic, it is possible that the approach described by as a stationary bootstrap will work. The statistic of the bootstrap needs to accept an interval of the time series and return the summary statistic on it. The call to the stationary bootstrap needs to specify an appropriate mean interval length. Cross 
Topic: Applications. Cross-validation can be used to compare the performances of different predictive modeling procedures. For example, suppose we are interested in optical character recognition, and we are considering using either Support Vector Machines or K-Nearest Neighbors to predict the true character from an image of a handwritten character. Using cross-validation, we could objectively compare these two methods in terms of their respective fractions of misclassified characters. If we simply compared the methods based on their in-sample error rates, the KNN method would likely appear to perform better, since it is more flexible and hence more prone to overfitting compared to the SVM method. Cross-validation can also be used in variable selection. Suppose we are using the expression levels of 20 proteins to predict whether a cancer patient will respond to a drug. A practical goal would be to determine which subset of the 20 features should be used to produce the best predictive model. For most modeling procedures, if we compare feature subsets using the in-sample error rates, the best performance will occur when all 20 features are used. However under cross-validation, the model with the best fit will generally include only a subset of the features that are deemed truly informative. A recent development in medical statistics is its use in meta-analysis. It forms the basis of the validation statistic, VN which is used to test the statistical validity of meta-analysis summary estimates. It has also been used in a more conventional sense in meta-analysis to estimate the likely prediction error of meta-analysis results. See also Boosting machine learning Bootstrap aggregating bagging Bootstrapping statistics Model selection Resampling statistics Stability learning theory Validity statistics Topic Notes and references